Hello folks, this is another video in the series that I'm preparing for people who want to transition from Catillo V5 to 3D Experience to this 2023X. It's another example where I have a, uh, a law, when I'm, uh, when I'm going to use a law, which uh, has conditional if statements in it. Uh, some of the previous ones that I've done, some of the other tutorials, the last four or five, uh, they did not have conditional statements, but here I will have one. And the concept of parallel curves, so these two are going to be used in order to do the present uh, present problem. Now remember, the, uh, uh, since I have to uh, actually type a few lines, lines of code, uh, the 3D experience ver version of the law icon that I have to use is right here, and that is the counterpart of the icon down below it, which is from the Catillo V5, law from Catillo V5, where you can actually type it up. Now, uh, remember, uh, it's really not V5 that's buried in uh, 3D experience, it is V6. Okay, so let's move on. <clears throat> the first problem that I want to do is right here. In other words, uh, I want to uh, uh, generate that curve, and that curve represents the radius of a certain uh, shafted shafted uh, uh, shafted uh, curve in order to generate the circle. So uh, the first thing you realize is that because R is the radius, uh, I just cannot go and type this thing in my law. I have to correct it so that uh, there is four inches. I'm using inches uh, as my units and uh, also two inches here. It's only then that this can give you a, a, a value which is, uh, has units of inch, as long as x is non-dimensional, okay? That's what I'm saying, x is non-dimensional, and r of x is the radius at the point, specific point x, uh, which is non-dimensional uh, for the problem. Now, here's the situation. We have a line down here, which is nine inches long, and I want to generate this curve above the line and then shaft, uh, well, not shaft, it, revolve it, revolve that curve about this. This guarantees that every point on this line, irrespective of what you take, when you plug it in this expression, will give you the correct radius. Now, just be careful that don't go and pick a point X here and say, oh, this X is, for example, three inches. What is the radius? The distance from the left-hand point is three inches. What is the radius? You cannot put three inches for X in here because the units don't match. So when you have the location, for example, three inches, then you non-dimensionalize it. You take the three inches, you divide it by nine, and that will give you three over nine, one third, that has no dimension. So this is how you actually uh, interpret the meaning of this uh, R of X, okay? Now, uh, this uh, video was uh, has some similarities. In fact, there's some additional material here uh, in this RAN 3D blog, blog and uh, you may want to look at it, particularly if you're interested in the particular V5 version of this video. Okay, I'll come back later and do this problem where it's the same setup where uh, the radius changes depending on what location you pick. So this is the conditional if statement that I was talking about. Again, X is non-dimensional, always goes from zero to one, where zero represents the left end point of that nine inch long uh, line and one represents the right end point of that nine inch long line, okay? Uh, the, we have to correct this uh, expression when it comes to typing these things so that the whole thing comes out in inches and uh, uh, of course, X is non-dimensional, okay, right? Uh, so here's the situation. So uh, between zero and 0.4, uh, we have one particular radius coming from the, uh, the first expression. First expression meaning in uh, one x is between 0 and 0.4. And the radius in the second region is calculated from a different expression. Okay? Uh, so uh, 
you know, basically I'm saying I have to write if x is less than 0 0.4, do this. Other, uh, if x is in some other range, do this. Otherwise, do this. In my case, there's only two of them, so if x is less than 0.4, do something else, do something else. Okay? So let's go ahead and do this problem. We're going to go up here, and uh, uh, let's see now. Now, first thing I'm going to do is to uh, create my, my laws. Now, notice that I am in generative shape design. Uh, uh, and if you click on the uh, uh, view, uh, on the tools right there, and expand this hidden down below, if you expand this hidden uh, set of icons, which is signified by that black uh, arrow, there we are. This is your law. Now the first one is not does not have conditional if statement, but I still I use this. So I'm gonna do that law number one. Okay, and notice that this is where we can start typing. However, uh, you have to define your formal parameters. Formal parameter means that something that's non-dimensional and something that comes out basically. So first of all, the new parameter type, I'll call this thing how about R. R, apply, and then change this thing to real. This is the non-dimensional parameter I'm talking about. A new parameter, I'll call it X. There we are. And now we start typing it. There are no if statements here. All it says is that R is equal to uh, two, oh, was that, four inches, four inches minus two inches times x to the power two. So I'm doing the first problem, right? Assuming there are no syntax errors here, when you say okay, that it appears in your tree, right, right there. Now, I have to draw this uh, uh, nine inch long line, and it doesn't matter where you draw it, so here's what I'm gonna do. Going to go there on purpose. I draw it as a tilted, as a tilted, uh, you know, uh, uh, tilted line. So on this plane, I will sketch. I will sketch. This is on purpose. I'm doing it as a tilted line because it doesn't matter there. And I'm going to make that dimension nine inches. I think I changed my units to millimeters. That's okay. I'm going to change that. Uh, nine, uh, nine inches. Okay, there we are. <coughs> Fine. Uh, exit. So this is nine inches. Let me change my units here. We go to two preferences. Uh, let me see now, my uh, uh, parameters and units, or, uh, measure, not measure, units, units, I'm going to change that to, uh, to me. Okay, so what I need to do is the concept of parallel curve, and to do that, let's go to uh, transform. Obviously, not transform uh, under uh, wireframe. Right there, there's a parallel curve. You click on it, and uh, uh, this is uh, the curve is this obviously yeah, because it was supported. It's that line. And the support is the, this plane where I drew my line in, right there. Okay. And I'm using a law. Here's the icon for the law, right there. You click on it. Uh, it's not constant, linear, or aspect. It's called advanced. There's nothing advanced about it. All that means is that I wrote the formula. So 
So you want to select it from the uh, from this from the tree. There we are. This is the formula that I have here for you. Okay. Good. So uh, we say okay. Another okay. And there you are. There you are. This is the this is the this is the radius. Uh, at every point, it has the proper information about the radius. If you look at this thing from a different angle, you can actually see. So let's look at it from the front. Where is that? Uh, from the front. There. Uh, Oops. Maybe slide. Uh, how about right? What you see here is exactly this, except that on purpose I drew it tilted. Okay, now we're going to go and uh, create a, a, a revolve surface. So we go here. Instead of uh, extrude, I'm going to say revolve. And uh, uh, I'm going to select the profile is uh, here. This is the profile. And the axis is there. And we say OK. And this is, oh, 360 degrees. Okay, so let's fix this thing. This is 180, 360. So OK. Oops. There. So that is this. Now I want to go and dig that a conditional statement so that if x is less than 0.4 use that formula but if x is bigger than 0.4 bigger or equal to 0.4 use a different formula right there so let's go here we don't have to do anything special we go here to the law and just modify it accordingly so uh, let me do the following put them here if uh, x is less than 0 0.4 and then I need an uh, inch oh no the x is not dimensional remember uh, then we have uh, let me put this thing in braces I can put my braces here how about that braces just so that you can see it better put some com com some space here close the braces there else else again braces now I type this stuff this stuff okay so I go uh, right there else are equal to uh, 3.6 3.68 inches minus 2 inches times parentheses x minus 0 0.4 to the power 2. Hopefully, there's no syntax error here. Let's double check this thing one more time. I'm typing. This stuff, yeah. And I think yeah, everything looks good. And then we say okay. There we are. You see that? Notice that what it's doing is that uh, if uh, if x is less than 0.4, center radius, the radius is calculated from that first expression. And then uh, if x is bigger than 0.4, it's calculated from that. The reason I put 36.8 here is that I wanted these to be continuous. But you can change this. It's just that, uh, for example, I can do a, let, let's try let's try something. Let's go ahead and do a 4 here in the log. Let's go make this thing 4. That continuity is log. So let's see. 4 inches. I mean, if you put something unreasonable here, there may be uh, issues with the, uh, the generation of the surface, but uh, yeah, like here, you can't, you can't do that, okay? 
uh, but th that's okay. You get the picture. Uh, so let me go back here. Let me change this thing. As I said, you can't just put anything you want. 3.68. Or, for example, you can go here and say, no, uh, if, if it's bigger than that, keep it at 3.6 inches. Just get rid of this. There. You can see that if you look at the view from the right, Over here is a, it's got a varying, a varying radius. From this point on, it's got a constant radius of rotation, or uh, revolving. All right. Good night.